critiquing religion, power structures, Politics, gender structures, monarchy, um, sexual identity. There Sweet. is blood, torture, nun orgies. And I think the biggest thing that draws one into this is that it really happened. <laughs> Welcome to Cow and Dave vs. the Machine video edition. I feel like I'm having a stigmata right now. We are talking about the devils on our podcast today. Dave, where do you even start? Like, how do you even want to approach the devils? How about, if you've never heard of it, this movie was banned. Banned it in the UK. It was X-rated. Yeah. It was vilified. It got the rare zero-star review from Kyle's hero, Roger right. Ebert. It was also one of the greatest films I've ever watched. I know. It's this weird anomaly. I could totally understand someone who was like, best movie I've ever seen, five out of five stars. Just as I can understand someone saying, zero out of five, hated it, we'll never watch it again. Yeah. It's one of those movies that is like, yeah, I agree with both of those opinions. I watched the whole movie like this and like this and not breathing Why would, sorry, properly. What, are you a four horseman? What are you and doing? And then what, what, after, what, what, what? I couldn't stop thinking about this stupid thing. And as we started talking about it, it broaches every subject any film has tried to take on, it successfully does it in the sense of being a complete film. It does it in under two hours, which is like yeah, which is unheard nice. of for something of this scope. It's beautifully made. It's very well acted, but it is also the most grotesque and brutal thing I've ever watched, I think, in my life. There Sweet. is blood, torture, nun orgies. There is a woman who fillets a candle and then licks the flames. Honestly, I'm not even a religious person, but just watching someone like burn pages of the Bible, I'm like, can you do yes. that? Like, I, I felt like I shouldn't even be watching some of the parts of this movie. And yet, just like Dave said, I was so engrossed by the story. I wanted to see how it ended. Oliver Reed, every time he comes on screen, is just like, I never want to stop watching you. He has Gravitas. such a magnetic personality. Vanessa Redgrave is knocking it out of the park as this Twisted. nun who feels like she understands or knows this person who she's never met in her entire life. Well, I don't think she and knows him. She just wants him. These sex-starved nuns inside this convent succumb to mass hysteria and then cause the destruction of their town. You know, one of those old stories. <laughs> Classic 30s cinema. This does have elements of critiquing religion, power power structures, Politics, gender structures, monarchy, um, sexual identity. There's the like, cool thing I think oh. it does too is take a character you're first introduced to who's like, oh, he's going to be the evil one. He's like the antagonist of this movie and he slowly becomes the protagonist. That's a very interesting fine wire act you have to do. Successfully though. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of hacks that try this, but this is a film where Ken Russell, the director, succeeds brutally and it's very difficult to get to that point, but it is so well fashioned. One of the main reasons for that is it's based on a book written by Aldous Huxley, so not a mm -hmm. hack. And I think the biggest thing that draws one into this is that it really happened. Yeah, that's the other crazy <laughs> thing. It's like, I mean, I'm sure there's things that have been accentuated sure, for dramatic purposes, but like fiction. the broad strokes of this did happen. So, you know, if you want to know about exorcisms and political intrigue and people being tortured to death, Google the Ludon, that's L-O-U-D-U-N, possessions, and it's all real. People who, you know, study or read know that this is actually kind of par for the course for that era, but right. holy shit, actually seeing it in a film just brings you right into it and it makes you want to throw up while at the same time thinking this is amazing I don't want to get lost that this is probably one of the most beautiful movies that we have talked about on the show whether it's from 1999 or 1971 yes based on the book by Aldous Huxley also partly based on a play that also adapted the same source material so there's a lot of play like theatrical elements that come into this which is like totally up my alley it is a movie that I think you do need to have someone there to like decompress it with you afterwards it's like yeah. talk through certain things and these high-minded concepts. I mean, we talked about it for almost two hours. Let's put it that way. There's a lot into this movie. And I think that for sure you could very easily just say pornographic, ultra-violent. Not to throw him too much under the bus because I do like a lot of Stanley Kubrick films. But the one that we have to compare it to is A Clockwork Orange. Came out in 1971. Lauded. It was nominated for Best Picture that year. Is definitely more remembered than this movie is. And I think it should be the reverse. I think this is much more of a challenging work than A Clockwork Orange is. Actually has a better point of view looks better than A Clockwork Orange and is better acted in that movie too. And it's not just 
for the sake of of effect, of reaction. Right. It's not reactionary. This thing is forcing people who watch it and get to the end to ask some very serious questions, not just of the characters, but of themselves. And I think that's that's that fine line with film and movies and art and expression versus, you know, popcorn shit. I mean, Clockwork Orange is not a popcorn flick, but there's a difference. Mm-hmm. And this movie, I cannot believe it's lost in time. Yeah. This is a basically movie should be impossible to watch if you yeah. want to watch it right now. I think the only way is to buy a DVD copy of it on Amazon. But no Blu-ray copy, no streaming availability, can't rent it or buy it anywhere online. Even though it's owned by Warner Brothers, they could release this on HBO Max today. Maybe they're waiting to build a HBO Max oh, XXX or probably. something. probably. It's like yeah. they're trying to come up with the, the remake and a sequel yeah. and an expanded universe. And the nuns are going to play against LeBron James in the next Space Jam movie. So Can you it's believe be... that really happened? They are in Space Jam 2. The other fascinating thing about this is this is clearly influenced Monty Python's Holy Grail. The more I was thinking about Dune, like the torture scenes in some of the rooms were just like some of the scenes where people are being tortured or murdered. Right. Like There's some visual language that's happening in this movie. And again, we're not film historians so i can't i can't definitely say this is the first time this happened in a movie but it does feel like there's elements from this movie that get reworked into other popular movies going forward namely the exorcist there's some scenes in here like oh that same thing happens in the exorcist other religious films possession films (laughs) monty python yes there's clear references that that movie's making to this movie i think it felt its way into popular culture to the point now that we don't even realize that that's what it came from originally and that's the slight to i don't know it's American or global culture that a movie like this, as challenging as horrific as it is, has disappeared largely in spite of it influencing clearly so many works that we consider to be a required viewing. Maybe generationally, maybe the new kids don't give a shit about it. I don't know. But if Criterion ever brings it back, or if you have access to uh, this film and the stomach for it, I think you should watch it. I do too. I think and I'm this sorry. Is you should watch. I will apologize in advance because it will suck. Right. But it is. It's a uh, hard film. A masterpiece. Don't watch it with your parents. Don't. I mean, Kyle might be able to. They've got a weird thing about watching very brutal movies together, but I wouldn't. (laughs) It's how we bond as a family, Dave. Anyways, you can listen to our full thoughts on our podcast, Kyle and Dave versus the Machine, available anywhere you can get podcasts. Of course, you can like and comment down below on what your thoughts on the devils are. We'll see you next week. Yeah. And then it's like, I don't know, you see like Satan's face or something pop up for just a second. I don't know if I can. I'm even thinking about whether I'm going to use any of the clips or not. It's just me. Can you imagine (laughs) having to rewatch this? This shit in edit. Yeah. But if it is a genuine case of possession by devils, and if Grandier himself was proved to be involved, yes, I think it bears investigation. 